Good morning. So I received an email recently from a company that I've been buying some parts off called Bouge RV. This is a company that sells a lot on Amazon. But before I get started, I do want to stress, I am big shot enough that they can send me out a free solar panel. I did not pay for it. However, they did not pay me. So I'm still going to talk some shit if I want to talk some shit. All right, here it is. Oh, Bouge RV. Well, packaging is nothing to write home about. Cardboard slab, a couple of zap straps. Let's take a look. Oh, there's the back side. 180 watts, monocrystalline solar panel. Cool, so comparable to the ones I have on the roof. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna compare them to the ones on the roof because the ones on the roof I have are like 18% efficient. This one, 21%. We're in the next generation, ladies and gentlemen. I got mine for less than a dollar a watt, but I had to buy 26 panels at once. I had to buy, I don't know if you remember, it's one of the first episodes about this whole build project. I had that little clapped out B2200 truck just bottomed out because I had it filled to the brim with solar panels. For a lot of people who are just outfitting their van or uh, a little cabin or their boat or something, you know, one panel, two panels, three panels, probably enough, they don't need 26. So they're not gonna get that great price, unfortunately. Well, now you can, so let's go see if it's any good. All right, this setup took an embarrassing amount of time, but uh, I'll walk you through, it's a really janky. So I have two Midnight Classics. I'm actually was looking at selling this one. I think I'm gonna keep it just in case, because uh, I think I'm gonna set up a second solar array down the road. And these unfortunately aren't worth that much on the used market. Almost everyone wants a new one for the new installation. Even though this thing has been fired up, I put it on the market and nobody really wants it. I paid like $800 for it. So I'm not selling it for like a hundred bucks. I'm not, I'll just keep it. I'll just use it. Because this solar panel uh, only puts out about 20 volts, um, I decided to connect it just to a 12 volt battery in order to get like a, a more reasonable result out of it. It sounds like we're making a lot of juice, um, but we're right near the winter solstice and we're really far north, so we are not. I'm currently pulling in 161 watts on this entire array, which is like 2,640 watts worth of potential energy. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of number crunching to compare these to actually see if the efficiency is as high as it is. We've got 165, 170, it keeps jumping back and forth. Oh, that's my, and we got one amp coming in here, exactly 12 watts. So 165 and 12. Let's crunch some numbers real quick. It looks like it is pretty bright out today, uh, but that's really a trick of the camera. It's it's just dark here, guys. I gotta be honest with you. So first, I'm gonna take 165, divide it by 2640. I get a number of 0 0.0625. That's basically how sunny it is, 0 0.0625. I'm looking for that exact same number out of my other panel. So, um, what was it, 12 watts divided by 180. 0 0.06666 repeating. So actually I'm getting a slightly higher number out of my uh, new panel here than the old one. And that might be up to the fact that my panels are two years old. Don't know, but uh, very close anyway. Now in order to get that efficiency number, let's compare in square footage. All right, we're gonna do this metric because we're a first world country and also because it's a little bit simpler. So um, these are two meters square each. That one back there, one meter square. So we got 16 meters square here, one meter square back there. That means if I divide my 165 watts by 16, well, you got 10.0 whatever watts, basically. And you might notice that is two watts less. Essentially, we're very close to those numbers. So yes, it is 21% efficient. And yes, it is awesome. And yes, I live really far north and it's depressing and I want some sunshine, god damn. The sun's not even peeking over the trees and it's already like noon. So yeah, I wish I was doing this test in the summertime so I can get some more robust answers, but uh, given the uh, margin of error that I might have, I don't fully trust these results. However, everything looks to be the way it's supposed to be. So I am looking at efficiency that's right in the ballpark of what they say, and uh, I'm pretty pleased. But I also wanna use this as a moment to explain to you guys that uh, just because you put up one solar panel, it's not gonna solve all your problems. 180 watts, that's a pretty significant amount of power. I had 240 watts on the top of my uh, camper van, and that was enough for me to get by. Now, 
Of course, the main connection you're gonna to wanna to do on any traditional sailboat, on any traditional motorboat, yacht, any uh, camper van setup, even a motorcycle setup, you're gonna to wanna to set up an auxiliary battery to charge off of your alternator. That setup is both cheap and dead simple. So uh, do that first. Now after that, the next move is definitely solar. Solar is your best bang for your buck. Despite the paltry power ratings I'm complaining about right now, it's still the best technology for the money. There's no moving parts. It's very resilient. You get 20, 25 years out of them, which is more than you get out of wind turbines. It's more than you get out of hydroelectricity. Those are have their other advantages, and I will get into those once I start installing the wind turbines on the back of my boat. I, but I think 90% of scenarios, your best bang for your buck is going to be solar. And what Bouge RV brings to the market is an affordable, decent quality solar panel that you get to just buy one at a time. You still get a good price. Um, for those of you who don't have, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars to drop on a pallet of, uh, of solar panels, this, this really does it for you. And you're able to just buy one at a time or just set up a small system and get started with solar. They've got a small MPP charge controller that I bought and that we'll be testing soon. I wish I had gotten the logistics of this and set it up first because I think that this is going to blow up the market a little bit because being able to just drop onto Amazon and like pick up a solar panel that's actually good quality, that actually gives you decent power and uh, that lets you piecemeal up your own system and design it the way you want but also isn't super complicated. It's a no-brainer. If this had been available back when I first set out my camper van, I totally would have got it. All right, I've given them way more marketing than they need. They're doing fine. <laughs> Let's get back to work on my boat. I can't believe my luck because today's the first day I've had off in two weeks and uh, I've had lovely weather. I've actually been able to wear a t-shirt for a little bit today. It's uh, now it's freezing cold because of all the fog. Look at this fog that rolled in because of the warm weather. Fog just rolls in and there goes the sunshine. There goes, you know, the warm weather, but we had a good run there. Oh, this bimini is gigantic. I'm gonna have to play around with this for a little while. If I want to get all the panels up there, it's going to be 13 feet, and this bimini is only 12 feet wide, long, so I kind of need all of it. Hey, what do you need? What do you need? You got a jacket? You got everything you need. Don't be silly. Do you want to go for a ride? You do? Okay, well I got the afternoon off from work, so um, I laid on the last piece of glass, which I didn't film, but I've run out of fiberglass. Look at that. That's a lot of fiberglass back there. It's a little chunky at the back because I had to use the last dregs of what I had left, and it wasn't perfect stuff, so it doesn't look that great, but sanding, fairing, I'll clean it right up. 
Unfortunately, it's cold enough that it's taking a long time for it to cure, so, so don't expect me to be sanding that in the next episode. I did get some paint done though, um, just primer. Uh, threw it down to coat up some of the fiberglass that wasn't yet covered just to make sure it doesn't degrade over the winter time um, I'm still trying to figure out what color I want to paint my top sides um, There's still more surface area than I really need so there's a possibility of putting more solar down here um, There's also looking at different non-skid uh, uh, methods of like glue on stuff roll on stuff I haven't really made up my mind, but I think the first thing I need to figure out is what color to paint the top side of the boat. I'm looking at different kinds of white, basically. Sandy white was officially the first one. Now I kind of look at some grayish whites, some off blue whites. Um, I don't know. Leave me a comment as to what you think I should be using. I've also left Bouge RV's solar panel up here. There's a little bit of dust on it again. But uh, it's been doing a great job of just keeping my 12 volt system running. Um, I disconnected all the chargers from the 48 to the 12. This is the only thing charging my 12. So that's now running the lights, the Wi Fi router you know, other small 12 volt stuff. And it's been keeping up. Um, you know, LEDs don't take a lot of energy and this Wi-Fi router is pretty efficient too. So the sun, the sun isn't exactly high in the horizon. Do you want to come for a walk? Ah, slow day down. There's wet paint out here. The wet paint, so you gotta come out slow. Come on, here, come here. Nice and gentle, ooh, so gentle. She comes rushing out usually, okay. Now hold up. You don't, okay, yeah, well. We didn't break anything, so that's good. All right, I'm gonna run out for a quick motor, see if I can catch some dinner. Beautiful fish, unfortunately cannot keep him because, uh, well, I'm not allowed to keep him. Anyway, I'll have to return him back at depth. 